The program opens with a zip. The orchestra plays Patton in the Park. Hi everybody, it's Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop and I am back with another thrift haul. We've got some beautiful depression glass to look at so let's dive right in. And I'm going to actually start way back here with this beautiful crystal so let's get these guys out of the way for just a second. <laughs> and I'm not going to touch any of this because I don't want to get my fingerprints on it. Now three of those candlesticks were made by the same company and one I'm not sure. The one I'm not sure about is the one all the way over there on the right side. But I'll talk about these first. They're made by the High Sea Company. And uh, the two candlesticks with the lavender candles in them, that particular pattern is called Aristocrat, if I remember. And I think the Aristocrat pattern was made from about 1910 up to about 1920. The candlestick in the middle is, uh, oh rats, that's called Colonial, I believe is the name of the pattern. It's a nice impressive 12 inch candlestick. You know, the Heisey Company made excellent glass known for its clarity. It is crystal, it's got the correct amount of lead in it and uh, you can just tell by the weight of it and by the beautiful clarity of it as well. It was highly polished glass and it went through several stages um, of polishing and handling and it was expensive when it was made. You didn't buy this in Woolworths. You had to go to a good uh, department store here in Philadelphia. You could have gotten it at Wanamaker's department store, Strawbridge and Clothier um, in New York. Macy's would have sold it or in small towns across America, jewelry stores would sell good crystal. And you can just see, this stuff literally looks like diamonds. Now, you can tell uh, Heisey from afar, but most of it is marked. And I'm going to zoom in here and let you see, or try to let you see the mark on at least one of them. And uh, well, let's pull this guy forward. It's always marked, almost always marked, with an H inside of a little diamond. And I think if we zoom in right here, you'll see it. See that? Okay, right up there. The H inside a diamond. And it's in two, two places on this one. We can see right there. You, you would miss it if you didn't know to look for it. Sometimes it's on the bottom of uh, pieces of glass, but oftentimes it's hiding somewhere. Now let's see. Okay, there it is, right there. You can barely make it out. You see it? Right there is an H inside of a diamond for Heisey. The company was in Ohio, uh, Newark. I'm sorry. Well, I don't know how you say it. In, in, here we have Newark. Uh, Newark, Delaware, and Newark, New Jersey spelled the same. I think it's Newark, Ohio, but you can correct me on that if I had that mixed up. 
And um, even though these were produced in the teens and 20s, uh, Heisey produced a lot of depression glass, which would be considered elegant depression glass because most of it is etched. And as I sold what it said was expensive glass at the time. All right, I paid 10 bucks for the guy in the middle and I paid about 12 bucks for the pair of the candlesticks on the outside. And believe it or not, they came from the good will. And um, nobody saw that H, or maybe they saw it and didn't know what it was, but aren't I glad I got it? Yes, I am. Very glad I got it. <laughs> okay, I'm also glad. And this one over here also has a lot of clarity to it. I don't see the H on it, so I have a feeling it may be an imposter, but it is still a very good crystal uh, candlestick. And so I was pleased to pick it up. Now some of this glass, I really don't know who produced it because it would take quite a while. I've done a little research, but it's kind of hard to pinpoint. This is called a, a um, mayonnaise set, and it's actually missing something, the underplate. There'd be a red, a ruby underplate. But this is the mayonnaise compote, or comport, and uh, the ladle, which these just this ruby ladle alone would probably, is very difficult to find. Ruby depression glass, as a general rule, uh, is more expensive because it was more expensive to make. I think they actually use gold to achieve that ruby color. Uh, who made this? Well, I don't know. Faustoria, Cambridge, Duncan Miller? Almost said Duncan Hines. Uh, Heisey? New Martinsville? Who did I forget? I know I left somebody out of there. Faustoria? Um, haven't been able to figure it out yet. But it's got a nice uh, embossed pattern on here and it's gilded. And um, I think I paid maybe five or six dollars for that. There's another unknown piece of depression glass. This would be a piece of elegant, considered elegant depression glass. There was a lot of experimenting with colors and color combinations in the 30s. And I kind of like this combination of amber uh, and green. Clearly would glow under a black light as you can see. But uh, I have not figured out who the manufacturer is yet of that piece because it's a color combination I haven't seen before. And unfortunately I only found this one water glass or tumbler or whatever you want to call it. Over here is a uh, cocktail. This would come with a cocktail shaker, ruby red glass, stainless steel bottom or chrome bottom. Um, sometimes they're marked Farber wear, uh, sometimes they're not. That would have come with a cocktail shaker and six other or five other of the little cordial glasses or cocktail glasses. I always pick up one lone glass when I find it. Sometimes people need it as a replacement to complete a set. Um, obviously made after 1933 when Prohibition ended. Okay, did we cover all of that? Now that back there, I also got at a thrift shop for $2 and I almost got detached retina and wet my pants at the same time when I saw that because I knew what it was. I knew it was a piece of Fenton and the color is called Chinese yellow. Now that's what Fenton called it. I'm not a huge fan of all the uh, crimped edges, you know, the little ruffled edges that Fenton liked to do. The hobnail stuff, that's a little frilly for me. But I do like the clean lines and the Art Deco style, the 1930s style of this vase right here. And it is a vase and it was made in, I believe, the year 1933. Canary Yellow had a very, not Canary Yellow, Chinese Yellow had a very uh, short run, and it is hard to find. This is a vase. Uh, it was made for home use. Came in all different colors. I've even seen it in iridized stretch glass, believe it or not. I think they made it in jade, what they call jade. Um, I'll let you look at it. Not signed. And it's a, uh, 
Well, let's see. I guess you would say translucent because it, it, it does allow light to pass through it. But it's kind of a um, milky yellow color. Unfortunately, there are some calcium deposits. This vase was used. It's not chipped or cracked, and I'm going to see what I can do to get that calcium off of there. I might not be successful, but I'll see what I can do. And um, if you want to see what got me so excited, take a look at this. Wow. Now, there is a big price on a reamer that was also made by Fenton in the Canary Yellow. And you can see, wow, just sold for that price. This vase is nowhere near that. I haven't found any uh, that sold recently, but I, I have a feeling this vase sells for somewhere between $50 and $100. I'm not sure about that, and I'm not really sure that I'm all that ready to part with it. Um, I have to think about that. Back there are four little cordial glasses, which have already sold. I've got to get those packed up and wrapped up and shipped out. Uh, elegant depression glass, because it has been etched, which means it was handled by someone who had to etch it and not just spit off of an assembly line. Beautiful green, I, again, am not certain of the maker. And then, let's see, here in the front, uh, well, first of all, this is a dresser uh, tray or piece of dresser uh, gla vanity glass. It's got felt on the bottom, I won't show you, but it was designed to do just that in the 1930s, to sit on a dresser so that a woman could put her perfume bottles and powder bottles, or a man, um, and not uh, damage the surface of the, of the wooden uh, vanity. Sitting on it, are two powder jars. I was going to do a guess what this is, but well, you can see what it is. Now, this one is missing its lid, and I'm not sure of the maker, but it is a powder jar from circa 1930. That's not a crack in the bottom, it's what's called a straw mark. You get used to that when you handle depression glass. There would never be marks like that in a piece of heisey. Anyway, it's in a hexagonal shape with um, a smooth section to it and then this embossed uh, stippling on the, two, two, uh, the bottom and the top of it. And it is missing its lid, so who knows, I may someday find a lid. Um, these jars came in, oh, oh, they came in, you could get elephants on the top, Scotty dogs as we have here, colonial ladies, um, all kinds of animals. and the lids would just simply fit on top. Now this one over here, again, I'm not sure of the maker. L.E. Smith made some of these. Um, this one is exactly as it was produced with a green top and a, a crystal bottom. That is the matching top and bottom, even though it appears as though what's embossed on it is different. That's the way it was manufactured. Uh, but sometimes these would be painted, uh, cold painted, and sometimes the top and the bottom would be the same color and sometimes they would not be. But uh, this is what this would look like if it had a lid on it. Now obviously that's not the, the proper lid. So, and we can see it was very inexpensive glass with bubbles in it. And I'm not sure whether you can tell or not, but these are uh, Scotties. Who we all know were so popular in the 30s. This particular jar is called My Pet or My Pets uh, by the collectors of such things. They had more value 20 and 30 years ago than they do today. There aren't as many collectors but probably still a $30 powder jar and not much for that because no lid. And then finally over here is a candy jar. Uh, these were manufactured by the thousands and every company. Uh, they, you could probably collect these and have a collection of, oh, 100, 200 of them. All different colors, 
all different kinds of etchings, but they all are in this urn shape. And as I said, most of the glass companies of the 1930s made this particular uh, candy dish. This one has some silver on it and an embossed design, and it's also etched. This is not an apothecary jar. These were made and manufactured for home use as candy jars. And what's cool about this is uh, even though it's crystal, um, put jelly beans in there and you're ready for Easter. Cinnamon hearts, Valentine's Day. Candy corns, Halloween. So it's the perfect versatile uh, piece of glass to decorate with, I think. And this dates to 1925 to about 1935. The dresser uh, jars, the 30s, again that glass back there, the 30s, 1933, um, the 30s, the 30s, the 30s, and the candlesticks back here. It's all basically 1930s glassware right there. So uh, I hope I didn't leave anything out, but I just wanted to show you all of this before I start uh, putting it online or, or putting it away or getting it wrapped up. So this is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now. Smile away every day and you'll find your troubles fade.